Hello, I'm Archie Luxury and welcome to the program. And today I want to talk about a topic that is uh, dear to my heart. How to photograph watches and jewellery. And this is a really, really fucking difficult thing. Everyone who buys a, uh, a point and shoot camera or a digital SLR, the first thing they start doing after they've taken a few happy snaps, the first thing they, they go and do is uh, they want to go and photograph, they want to photograph some of their possessions. And uh, they use a, normally a kit lens like a, uh, an 18 to 55 or some sort of lens like that. And the results are pretty bad because they don't really know what they're doing. And this is what it comes down to. You've really got to, you've really got to get this art off the ground. And uh, how to photograph watches and jewellery. And uh, the, the next thing, psst, the next thing after... So let me, just, let me just say this on record. Firstly, when someone buys a camera, they take a few happy snaps of the car, the cat. Then they want to photograph their possessions. If they're a watch collector or they've got jewelry, they want to take a few photos of that. And then they want to take a few bedroom snaps. <clears throat> bedroom snaps, which we'll cover in another video if the audience thinks it's um, appropriate. So, so today we're going, we're going to look at um, we're going to look at photographing watches and jewelry. What is the secret? Let's let's go through the tips. And uh, I got a few points. Got a few points here. We're out in the park, and uh, it's not just I'm not just out here for the sake of it. No, I want to get natural lighting. So let's have a look at what tips. Do I have to photograph watches and jewelry? Let's commence the program, fuckers. Okay, now the first secret of uh, photographing watches and jewelry is picking your camera and lens. Have a look at these two cameras here. We got a, a D, a Nikon D80, which is uh, that's sort of like a uh, a camera from about 2006, and we got a a Nikon D7000 which is a, um, according to Ken Rockwell, it's probably the best bang per buck camera in the digital SLR market today. Great bang per buck. So which two would take better photos? Which one would take, well, you'd naturally say it's the D7000, but hang on a minute. It's nothing to do with the body. The most important thing is the lens. You've got to use a macro lens. And uh, have a look on the D80. We've fitted here a, uh, a Nikon. It's got a really top-end lens. It's a Nikon AF Micro Nikkor 60mm. That's a fantastic lens. On the uh, D7000, we've got a Nikon DX. We've got a kit lens, an 18-70 to kit lens. So uh, if you're going to take shots, it doesn't matter whether you've got a, a D800E if you've got a if you've got a shit kit lens you're gonna have shit kit results so the most important thing I could say to you if you want to photograph watches and jewelry is get the right gear fuckers get the right gear you must have a macro lens that is so important and uh, to prove the point I'm gonna put up two photos two photos and you can see you can see the results and firstly, I'm going to hook up the Nikon D80 with the macro lens. So this is the older camera with the special macro lens. And look how clear it is. And this is how far I can go in. I can even go in further, but I just wanted to uh, take a shot. And uh, so this is a older camera with a better macro lens. And if I now switch over to the uh, D7000, which is a better camera, but I've got the standard 18 to 70 kit lens on, I can't get in as close, otherwise <clears throat> it just gets too blurry and it won't take the shot. And um, it, uh, you can see, the lens makes a huge difference, more so than the body or the pixels or the, the resolution or any of that other bullshit. On the screen here now, you can see some photos. I've put the, uh, the macro lens onto the, um, the D7000, which is the better body. 
and uh, have a look at some of these shots here. They're just superb. So this is what happens when you get your lighting right, you get your lenses right, the body right, and um, you just relax and take a few shots there. So um, I hope you can see the, the benefit of getting your, your shots right here. And uh, the good body is only part of the equation. The lens itself. And it's funny. I can take better shots with a D80, which is a fairly old Nikon DSLR camera, compared to somebody who's got like a D4, which is a super, super duper Nikon professional camera, if they don't have a macro lens. And uh, the glass is so important in this equation. And uh, it depends what you're wanting to photograph. I'll actually take off the macro lens when I don't want close-up work. But for true close-up work, this is what you need. You must have a macro lens. And uh, a good macro lens is about 500 bucks, five to 700 bucks on eBay. And uh, I, I think it's, uh, if you're gonna be serious about the hobby, that is what you need. It's the tools you need to do your job. And here we are, we're just getting this shoot ready. And uh, you can see the results are gonna be better because we've got the, the better lens. That's all the most important thing is not so much the camera body, it's the lens itself. That's the most important thing. Okay. Now, what's the next bit? The next bit of importance for photographing watches and jewelry. And uh, it's simple. No flash. You don't want to use a flash. And um, it, this is a problem because if you're, if you're new to photographing things, if you're new to photography, you often will set the camera to auto mode. And uh, both these cameras here, the D80 and the D7000, they've both got auto modes, which is, auto mode's okay. You know, I'm, I'm not a big hater of auto mode. I think auto mode has its place. You can do a lot worse than auto mode. Let's just say that much. But the beautiful thing about the D7000 is it has auto mode where you can actually turn the flash off. Because often what happens is the auto mode, it determines itself, depending on the lighting, whether it needs a flash or not. So the beautiful thing with the D7000 is that it has an auto mode with no flash. And it's really critical. If you want to take good shots of jewelry, watches, you've got to have no flash. The flash really is not a good thing. It's a bad thing. And uh, the, other, uh, the other thing is, is that you've got to have good lighting. And uh, the best lighting you can use is natural lighting. And uh, here we are. We're in a park. It's, uh, what's the time? It's quarter past 11. It's a bit sunny. It's a hot, sunny day in Brisbane, Australia. So what we're going to do is we're going to find a shady spot. This is a shady spot that we're, we're camped in. And we're going to use a light box. This here is a portable light box. And, and all it basically is, it's a box which diffuses the light. And that's why it's white, because the light comes in and it diffuses it. It makes it softer and uh, we're going to get much better results there. So let's, let's, um, so we're just in the park. You, 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 can, you can see what I'm saying here. So let's get this ready for a shoot. And here we are getting ready for the shoot. So we've... Uh, We've got the light box. Now I've got a little stand here. I'm using a watch display box. And uh, I've put my, my good lens, I've put the 60 mil macro lens back onto the, uh, the D7000. And let's take a few shots here. Let's take a few shots. And uh, sometimes when you're taking these shots, it's very nice to uh, play with some reflection. Because I'm using a shiny watch box here. So we can actually get that into the photo, and uh, it you've got to uh, you've got to play with the the uh, the scene and the subject. You need to have a bit of time up your sleeve, and uh, if these fucking helicopters would just get the fuck out of this park, I'd be so happy. You know, I'm trying to fucking film, make videos here to earn some Google fucking ads money, and uh, what is the fuck is there an air show going on? I don't know. But uh, anyhow, as I was saying, just taking some nice shots here with this uh, this camera, 
The other thing you want to do is too, is whatever you're photographing, clean it first. That's right, clean it. Because, you know, little little smudges and a little bit of grime here and there really detracts from the photo. So if you're wanting taking the best shots you can, clean your subject first. That's my... Uh, my advice there so you can you can really get some nice nice results there and uh, I, I, I highly recommend I highly recommend uh, just coming out to the park coming with a light box and uh, playing around just just see what results you can get and uh, you'd be surprised you'd be surprised some of your uh, some shots that I've tried to do where I've, uh, I've planned it out have turned out to be disasters Whereas other shots, I just take my time. Yeah, just take take it casually, no pressure. Have turned out to be great shots, and uh, that's 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 really the the art of photography. You want to just just take your time because it is fun. Photography is a great hobby to have, and uh, I like nothing more than just coming into the park and taking some wonderful shots. Some wonderful shots and uh, p play around. I've, I like to. Uh, I like exotic straps. That's the thing I'm really into at the moment. Exotic animal straps, fuckers. And um, I'm just taking a few shots here. Beautiful, beautiful, absolutely beautiful. So uh, that's 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 some some tips there. The so let's just go through that again. So, so the, the art of good photography. Firstly, you need a macro lens, okay? There's no, no way around it. You need a really good macro lens to take good shots, okay? And uh, I always buy, when you're buying lenses, buy for your next camera. I bought my macro lens and people said, oh, you should have just got a DX lens. No, I bought that macro lens with the camera, the next two cameras ahead. I'm going to use this macro lens for the rest of my life. And um, this is the thing. You buy lenses, buy them once. So uh, that's, a, that's a great lens. The other thing is, is that don't use flash. Flash sucks. The next thing is diffuse the light. You want to use natural lighting and use a light box. And uh, finally, clean your jewelry or watches before you're photographing it. That really makes a big, big difference. I'm Archie Luxury. I hope you've enjoyed this special on how to photograph watches and jewelry.